This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2157. What happens if I die without creating a will? By Vicki Cook and Amy Blacklock of womenwhomoney.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. What happens if I die without creating a will? By Vicki Cook and Amy Blacklock of womenwhomoney.com. If you've not yet created a will, it's probably because you aren't wanting to think about death or perhaps you're procrastinating or don't think you need one. Unless you have no assets, possessions, or children, or you don't care what happens with everything you own after you die, there's a good chance you'll want to create a will soon. Maybe you're just assuming your possessions and assets will transfer to your spouse, partner, parents, kids, or the closest family member if you die. Someone will get your money and things to the right person or people, right? That could happen, but if you die without a legal will, you are intestate. What does intestate mean? Dying in intestancy means an administrator from the probate court will distribute your assets, not the people who are closest to you. Laws vary by state, but each state has a plan or formula as to the distribution of property in the event of intestacy. The only assets usually not requiring probate are ones with names beneficiaries or joint accounts with rights of survivorship. Those assets include such things as pensions, life insurance, and bank accounts or joint property. No, while a will designates who gets what after your death, it doesn't prevent probate, whereas a living trust can. What might surprise you is that without making a legal will, the people you want to receive your assets or distribute them may never even get them. If you want to designate the distribution of your assets, ensuring the fulfillment of your final wishes, you need to create a will and you'll need to update your will whenever you have a significant life event. What goes into creating a will? A will is a legal document and can vary from a single page to hundreds of pages or more. It depends on the complexity of your estate and your final wishes. But a will is an essential part of building a solid financial house, and you'll likely need one to protect your assets and your loved ones. Your will should include assets, real property, and the guardianship of your children, along with a named executor. The executor arranges for payments of debts and expenses, and he or she distributes the property that is part of the will to the proper parties after your death. If you own rental properties or have a small business, ensure you include them in your will too. Different states have rules about what can be done with rental properties during a probate period. Your family and or business partners need to know what to do with your small business or share of if you die. Make sure you document your wishes in your will. Are there many people without wills? According to a 2017 caring.com survey, only 42% of adults have created a will. That means almost six in 10 adults don't have wills and could end up in testacy. The survey also showed only 36% of parents with kids under 18 had a will. In addition to creating probate issues for disbursements of assets, This could also cause a situation where the state decides on guardianship of minor children rather than parents. How often should you make changes to a will? You should think about making changes to your will with any significant life event. This could include a birth, death, marriage, divorce, or when a child turns 18. It could also include when you sell, buy, or acquire any major assets. Can you create a will without a lawyer? It's important to understand what your state requires regarding creating a legal will. If you don't follow the requirements, your will may be invalid. Some people choose to handwrite a will or follow a downloaded will template. Others use online services such as Rocket Lawyer or Trust and Will to make a will and other estate planning forms. Many people think it's a mistake to skip using a lawyer though. Your individual circumstances, understanding of state requirements, and the complexity of your estate should dictate whether you need an attorney to create your will and other estate documents and what your estate plan will cost. When in doubt, seek legal advice to make sure your will is valid and you're protecting your heirs and your final wishes are adhered to. What could go wrong if you don't have a will? The laws of intestate succession are different depending on what state you live in your relationship status, and whether you have children. 
In general, your property would go to your surviving heirs. This could include a wide range of people, even distant relatives, but it may leave out your boyfriend or domestic partner. Here are a few examples of what could happen to your assets if you die without a will, depending on the state you live in. Number one, for those who are single and don't have kids, your parents could inherit your estate. Your siblings and possibly their children may also be included in the division of assets. If you have kids, your estate would generally go to them. Number two, if you're married without kids, your spouse may get the entire estate or it may be split with your parents and siblings depending on the type of property being passed on. However, if you're married with kids, the estate usually goes to your spouse. Unless you have kids from another spouse or partner, which in that case, the estate may be split between those children and your surviving spouse. And number three, if you're an unmarried couple or if you're in a domestic partnership, your estate may go to relatives rather than the surviving person in the couple or domestic partner. If you're in either of these relationships, make sure you clearly understand state laws surrounding wills and inheritance and any special rules that may apply in your situation. You just listened to the post titled, What Happens If I Die Without Creating a Will? by Vicki Cook and Amy Blacklock of womenwhomoney.com. While we all need a will, as demonstrated in this article, it might not be enough. We also need to get organized and save the executors of our estates the headache of figuring out all of our accounts, finding our important documents and files, etc. Also, while a will comes into play when someone dies, what about an emergency situation where you need someone else to help with your affairs? This is where an emergency binder comes in. It's sometimes referred to as an in case I'm hit by a bus binder. This binder should include your will, as well as any contact information for important people in your life, including employers. Also insurance policies, all financial accounts, health records, property deeds, and car titles. Having all your stuff organized is going to be a huge help to your loved ones, who will likely need to figure this stuff out during a very emotional time. There are a number of resources online for checklists to help you create your binder. And I came across a pretty comprehensive resource on the Smart Money Mamas blog, It's a fillable step-by-step family emergency binder with over 90 pages of simple printable worksheets. That should do it for another edition of Optimal Finance Daily. I'll be back tomorrow as usual, so I'll see you there on the Wednesday show where optimal life awaits.